Hello, my name is Dr. Mastura Mama Yusof. I'm a consultant clinical oncologist and I'm the secretary of the Malaysian Oncological Society. Today, I'm going to answer some of the common and challenging questions that we get asked uh, often about breast cancer in our clinic. I really like this question for my patient because it's important to know how the different types of breast cancer besides where they begin from or what is their stage or how much they have grown or spread. Yes, the type of breast cancer that you have been diagnosed with is very important for you to know because it will help your oncologist to decide what is your best treatment and, and how uh, to go on um, treating based on what is the type of cancer that you have. So some patients may have non-invasive breast cancers. These are what we call stage zero cancers. These are cancers that are called ductal carcinoma in situ or lobular carcinoma in situ. But these patients generally are not uh, common and most patients that we know, maybe more than 80% have what we call invasive breast cancers. So this is the most common type of breast cancers that we see in clinic and namely the type of uh, cancers that they have are invasive ductal carcinoma and invasive lobular carcinoma. If these cancers come in a more advanced stage, they will be called locally advanced breast cancer. And if they had spread or metastasized, then they are called metastatic breast cancer. The subtypes of breast cancer are based on the genes that this cancer expresses. So the three main subtypes based on the genes that the cancer expresses are the homoreceptor positive breast cancer. That means that the tumours are positive for the estrogen receptor and progesterone receptor. There are HER2 positive breast cancer, which means that the tumour have too much of the HER2 protein. The HER2 is overexpressed. And then we have the triple negative breast cancers where these tumours doesn't possess any of the hormone or her two receptors. Surgery for breast cancer removes the visible tumours in your breast and armpit lymph nodes. After the surgery, your tumour will be examined in the lab and a few factors will be determined, such as the cancer size, the number of lymph nodes involved, the grade of the tumour, and what are the estrogen and progesterone receptor status, as well as the HER2 receptor status. Now, even if your surgery was successful at removing all your visible cancers, or even if you have had the smartest surgeon ever to remove your tumour, some microscopic bits of cancer sometimes remain, and they are undetectable with our current methods of imaging or clin by clinical examination. So based on the information from your cancer stage, cancer type and grade, and whether you have the hereditary type of breast cancer, you still require treatment that is given to lessen the chance of your cancer recurring and help to extend your lives. So these are chemotherapy, radiotherapy, targeted therapy, hormone therapy and immunotherapy and the benefits of these therapies versus their side effects for each indication can be discussed with your doctor. Soon after a diagnosis of breast cancer is made, more investigations termed staging are made to determine the presence and extent of cancer invasion and spread and therefore we could use this information to select appropriate treatment and treatment aims and to inform the prognosis of the patients. So often a successfully completed treatment for cure that can be a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, hormone therapy, all these treatments are given to eradicate the cancer to below the level of detection via clinical examination or via routine scan and these are usually performed during the monitoring follow-up visits for the patient. So this time point is called cancer remission but that does not necessarily mean that you are cancer free. So we do continue to do this in order for us to detect the cancer recurrence as early as possible. So cancer recurrence can occur when some cancer cells actually survive our initial therapy and they re-emerge years later either at the same breast, in the regional lymph nodes or in other distant organs. So when cancer recurs, the oncologist feels just as bad as the patient and the challenges could be very significant to both sides. This, this is why it's very important to understand that prevention is key and the earlier a woman comes forward, 
to, to be you know to be examined the earlier and less aggressive the breast cancer is thus reducing the chance of cancer recurrence completing your planned therapies is the next step to be taken followed by a follow-up scheme to minimize the recurrence risk further so don't forget to look after your weight exercise regularly avoid alcohol and smoking and maintain a healthy diet and keep yourself physically active so that this holistic approach to prevent or delay cancer recurrence will be more successful. So some women still do need to undergo mastectomy. For example, those with small breasts but large tumour. If they have multiple tumours occurring in different parts of the breast, if they have inflammatory breast cancer, or those who do not respond so well to new adjuvant. Neuroadjuvant therapy are treatment with chemotherapy and or targeted therapy that is given before surgery to shrink the tumour so that the surgery will be easier to be done. Now we have more options in terms of how that mastectomy is performed where if reconstruction of the breast is possible, surgeons may be able to preserve the nipple and the areola complex and place them on the reconstructed breast mount. The mastectomy is also performed in a way that it doesn't disrupt the muscle too much, so minimizing the muscle spasm and some of the pain associated with surgery. So you don't have to worry about what the mastectomy could cause to you after a surgery has been carried out. There is no doubt that women's fears and health beliefs or attitudes impact their ability to face the diagnosis of breast cancer. Certainly, in the past decades of caring for women affected by this cancer, we have observed how our Malaysian women with breast cancer evolve to be more receptive to the diagnosis. In our practice, there are two very clear clinical scenarios how breast cancer is detected or diagnosed in women. So either the diagnosis is made by screening mammography, breast ultrasound or breast MRI that identifies the disease before it causes symptoms in an asymptomatic individual. Alternatively, it's the result of investigations performed after a patient's complaint of a symptom, such as breast lump, armpit lump and retracted nipple, etc. etc. So the patients who come for screening is more aware. They are proactive and they take charge of their health. So often they are less fearful and more ready to face a diagnosis because they know that early detection of breast cancer by regular screening is one of the most effective methods to promote early treatment and increase their survival rate. But those who felt alarmed or have symptoms, now that's when the fear in facing the diagnosis is more evident. We know that few experiences in life compare with the devastation of being handed a cancer diagnosis. The word cancer strikes fear in the minds of most people. Now, grappling with little knowledge and swarmed with feeling of uncertainty, patients felt like they are losing control of their lives. To make things worse, there are also plenty of unhelpful advice, misinformation, cultural beliefs, myths or wrong perception surrounding breast cancer diagnosis that confuse patients more. But yes, generally, the ability to face a diagnosis has tremendously improved amongst our Malaysian women in the past 20 years. These women are taking more responsibility towards achieving and maintaining good health conditions and healthy behaviours, including preventive actions. Now, they share the knowledge and warn others about not leaving their cancers until it's too late. They ask questions and obtain accurate information from their oncologists, from their breast surgeons and the healthcare team who are able to explain and communicate in the best way possible based on their expert knowledge and resources, all that the patient need to know about the cancer, the treatment and other care needs. In addition, we also have a wealth of information now widely available in the media and the internet and they are free and freely accessible to patients and family members. And finally, support from the family, the friends or the fellow cancer survivors do help these patients go through the days since the diagnosis is made and therefore they are more receptive, more open to the cancer diagnosis and the treatment. We live in this day and age of ever-increasing knowledge on the net, but we take pride in our role as oncologists who are there besides our patients with the primary responsibility of creating an appropriate balance between hope and truthfulness. So in oncology today, various options are possible to help virtually everyone. 
to a greater or lesser extent. Sometimes the outlook for the patient depends on the response to treatment and the prognosis is much clearer much later. Without minimizing the seriousness of the situation, we offer kind words and empathy while explaining and communicating in the best way possible what the cancer diagnosis means and before moving to giving advice about the complex management of the cancer or even palliative care. It's also important to put on the listening ears because patients have anxiety, they have fears, they think that life is now almost all over. So we always remind ourselves to give some time to our patients to express their concerns so that we can pick up the most relevant issues and give more focus to these issues. We help them understand their specific circumstances, we create confidence and we assure them that we have the knowledge, the scientific evidence and resources to select treatment and offer the best possible and realistic care for an improved prognosis for them.